Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make your very own tiki masks. So, without further ado, let's hop right on into it. Right, so first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you have some kind of surface to do your work on that you don't mind getting dirty. So I have a, a wooden board which keeps the surface also nice and flat if whatever I'm on top of wasn't. You want to get your cardboard that you're going to make the mask out of and draw around a toilet roll to get the correct circumference of the toilet roll. We're going to come back to that later, but basically this is going to be the mouth hole of your mask. Now I like to do another rim around the mouth hole on my masks just because I think it captures the tiki look, but you don't have to do this. And once you've done that or haven't, just start drawing on the pattern that you want to have on your mask. Uh, I had already made a mask and I wanted this one to be quite different so I went for lots of curves because my original mask had a lot of straight lines and angles. You might want to get a piece of scrap paper and just come up with some designs beforehand or maybe just dive in. Now I'm drawing the eye holes. I say holes, I'm not actually going to cut these out though. They're just for show. You may want to cut out your eye holes depending on what you want your mask for, but for me it's not important. I'm now adding some further detailing to my mask. I didn't have a full idea as I was making this, so I was just kind of seeing what happened. You'll see me almost pretend to do some drawing at points, and that's where I'm just imagining what it will look like when it's done, so that I can, like, oh no, there I was I'm brushing off some, some, some dust off of the board. Now I'm drawing some lines. Um, as I draw those, I decided I wanted to have a curve around the mask, mouth hole, and then an inverse curve when they come up to the cheeks. And it's just an example of how, after doing a simple thing, like the, the original lines that I drew, it then gave me the inspiration of how to continue it. And now I've also done second um, cheek lines or whatever they are. Now I'm just doing a little pattern at the top and I'm adding in some more curves because like I said I wanted it to have lots of curves and I believe that's almost that's almost done. Here I was imagining what would it look like if I did draw a line there but then I decide that actually I don't want anything there or at the top and instead I get out some scissors and I decide to just cut the corners off instead of drawing lines on them. If you are going to be doing cutting with scissors, be careful, cut away from yourself, and maybe get an adult to help you. I wanted my mask to completely cover the wearer's face, so I was careful not to cut out too much, because I wanted the card to still be quite big. And remember to put away your rubbish and your offcuts. You don't want to just leave that stuff lying around. So what I'm doing now is a very important step, and no matter what your mask design is, I would recommend doing this. Drawing vertical lines all over your mask. This is because when we come to colouring this in, it'll really help to make it look like it's made of actual wood instead of just cardboard. It's quite a boring step though, drawing these lines, but you just got to be a bit patient, and trust me when I say colouring in these lines is in my opinion, the most satisfying part of making the mask. It's such a simple thing to do, but it just really brings a lot of life and a lot of realism to what you have created. We'll fast forward through the rest of him, or I say him, of me making these lines. Okay, so I've just finished all the lines, and now I'm going to start colouring in. I'm starting with the eyes. When you're colouring, you want to use the side of the crayon where possible instead of the, the tip or the corners, or which is what you should be using to do the straight lines. Now, if you're cutting out your eye holes, there is no need to colour them in, but because I'm leaving my eye holes in, I am colouring them. I would recommend not using black for anything other than things that are supposed to be holes, 
otherwise it'll make it difficult for people to tell what's supposed to be a hole and what is supposed to just be black and also the outlines to everything are in black as well so if you start colouring in black it just becomes too confusing for, for anyone looking at it uh, I like to have an orange ring around the mouth of my mask because um, the first mask I created also had this orange ring and I want them to have some similarities to show that the people who are wearing these masks are from the same tribe uh, but you might want yours to have no similarities or maybe you want yours to be very similar, almost uniform with each other that's up to you I'm now getting a red crayon with these smaller crayons it's harder to use the side, especially if they're covered in paper so you have to use the tip, even though I said before that I'd recommend not using it. Um, I wanted to have this uh, large portion on the nose bit red, so when I started colouring in I'd already mentally calculated that with my alternating colours that piece would be red. Uh, so just make sure you also consider that when you start colouring. If you're colouring something similar to my nose and brow piece here uh, and there's a specific piece that you want to be a specific colour I would actually recommend starting from that piece so that you make sure you get it right. Another thing about using crayons is that they aren't the most sturdy thing ever and they can break so you should try and be careful and not apply too much pressure when you're drawing otherwise you may break your crayons I decided to get a purple for these side bits by the eyes and there you go, I actually broke that crayon because I was rushing and pressing too hard so just be patient um, and take it easy and if you do break a crayon, just remember it's not the end of the world because you can continue with the broken piece of crayon. You might have to peel back the paper on the crayon if the paper is now covering all of the bit of the crayon that you want to use, but that's no bother. I'm now searching for another shade of red to use on the nose piece, but I, I didn't find it then. And what I'm using now is one of my offcuts from earlier just to test out different crayons on instead of testing them on my actual mask so that if I don't like the colour it doesn't matter. I would definitely recommend that practice. I've now got a green crayon to do these lines by the cheek and mouth although uh, because of the camera it does appear more blue than green. I was looking for the red crayon as I said, um, but seeing the green in the box just inspired me to use it and that's fine, I think you should really try and encourage yourself to get caught up in, in the moment and inspired by seeing a particular colour and just go with it and use it. Let your imagination guide you and just take control of, of what you're colouring. Uh, now I'm just blowing and, and wiping some, some shavings off of my cardboard. I accidentally moved it there, but that's okay. The reason I haven't bothered to colour in the inner circle of the mouth is because I'm actually going to cut that out later, so there's no need to colour in it. There we go. That's most of the colouring done. I just need to find the kind of red that I want and then to do the vertical lines. But that's not, I don't count that as part of the actual colouring because it's more of a finishing touch kind of thing. That red crayon, I was very glad I tested it because it turned out as more of a manky brown colour, which I wouldn't have wanted. Now, this one appears more orange than red, but it was good enough for what I wanted it for and so I hopped in and started using it.
because my brow pieces have an odd amount of segments, it does mean one of them's going to have red on the tip and the other will have orange on the tip. That's okay for what I'm doing, because I didn't mind if it was asymmetrical. But if you want to make sure your mask is symmetrical, you should plan that out when you're doing the black outlines at the beginning. I broke another crayon there, but as you can see, it doesn't matter. I can quite easily continue and finish off. If you're doing an alternating colour pattern like I have on this nose and brow piece, you should definitely do all of one colour first and then all of the other colour. It's a much more efficient way of colouring it in than switching which crayon you're holding for each segment. Now I'm just blowing some more shavings, keeping all my crayons tidy in the same place, which will make it easier if I ever need to use them again. Now I'm going to start doing these brown lines. I'm, I was very excited when I was doing this because, as I said, it's my favourite part. It's very satisfying and after you've started to have a couple of these lines done, you'll be able to see that it really does make the mask look like it's, it's made of proper wood. These vertical lines are like different panels of wood that have all been attached together, if you will. Um, at least that's what that's what they're, it's meant to resemble. Obviously it's just a piece of cardboard, but it's supposed to resemble a, a wooden tiki mask. You don't need to worry about any of your mask not looking completely perfect, because what you have to imagine is that these masks were being made by just normal people like you or me, not artists, and they wouldn't have always been the best craft craftsmen and so their actual masks would not necessarily be perfect either so you can just rest easy knowing that the imperfections make it more real if anything and embrace them we'll probably fast forward through the rest of me coloring in these lines as it's all pretty much the same thing So because I was doing this on a, a surface like the board I have, it meant when I'm colouring close to the edge of the cardboard, it doesn't matter if I go off the edge of the cardboard, because all I'm going to hit is, is my board. I don't mind if that gets crayon on. If I was doing this straight onto my table or something, then I would have to be a lot more careful so as to not get crayon on the table. And I would definitely recommend using some old newspapers or a board like I'm using when you're doing any kind of arts and crafts, just to keep your furniture nice and clean. Okay, there we go. I've finished doing the vertical lines on my mask, and as you can see, it looks a lot better now, a lot more like real wood. Such a simple thing. Now I'm getting out a cutting mat and a craft knife so I can cut out the circle from the mouth. This is very dangerous, you should definitely get an adult to help you if you're not comfortable doing it. And if you are doing it, make sure you cut away from yourself and keep your fingers very clear of the blade. Uh, I'm only cutting out the inner circle of the mouth, that's very important. If you've done a, a secondary circle like I have, don't accidentally cut that out. It's only the uncoloured area that you want to cut out and then just pop it out. Simple as that and get the toilet roll that you had earlier. I've cut my toilet roll in half because I only want it to be half the length, but it doesn't really matter the length. And now I'm just giving it a quick once over with the brown crayon. When you are doing this, make sure you have your fingers inside of the roll just to give it a bit of structural integrity. Because if you try and color on it straight away, you will deform your, your toilet roll and squish it and then it won't be the circle that you want it to be. Once you're happy with that, you need to do kind of a tricky bit. This could be the trickiest part of the whole build. You want to try and stick it through the hole of the mask from behind. And at this stage, don't worry if you have to squish your toilet roll just a little bit to make it fit through. Once you've got it through just a little bit, you can turn the mask over and bang the tube the rest of the way through. Now, to stop the tube from falling out, even though it is quite securely done in my case, you want to turn it over again and get some sellotape, stick half the sellotape to the inside of the toilet tube, and then the other half onto the back of the mask. Although one piece of sellotape is good enough to do this, 
I would recommend using about four, all pointing in the different cardinal directions, up, down, left and right. Uh, but you don't need to worry about them being perfectly spaced out, just in the vague direction. And again, when you're sticking things to the tube, make sure you have your fingers as support for the tube so you don't accidentally crush it. It can be a little tricky, but with just a bit of patience you should be able to do it no problem. And there we go. You don't need to worry about colouring the inside of the tube because nobody will notice that it's just normal cardboard with sellotape on. Now I'm picking out an elastic band. You want a nice strong elastic band and just make sure it's big enough to fit around your forehead. Now you want to turn the mask over and find a place that you want to attach the headband to and get a nice big stapler. The bigger the stapler the better. Be careful with it. Make sure you don't accidentally staple your fingers. You want to lay out the, the elastic band where you want it to be and then move it so that it's underneath the teeth of the stapler. And now making sure your fingers are nice and clear, push down on it very hard because you have to go through both the elastic band and the cardboard. Once you've done that, you should be able to wear your mask, but just be careful when you're pulling on the elastic band so that you don't rip out the staple. I had a bit of trouble doing this on my first mask, it did take me a few staples but I've perfected the technique by now and can do it on the first try. There I am wearing the mask, it looks good. Now you want to use another elastic band and attach your mask to some kind of big cylindrical object. This will give your mask a curvature to make it look more realistic. That's the mask I made earlier, by the way, in case you're curious why it looks different now. Alright, that's basically the end of the video, so I'll uh, see you some other time.